Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are continuing our prototyping of uh, Mars landing systems. As you can see, uh, this little guy is supposed to deploy these airfoils and then use drag of the atmosphere to slow himself down. He does have four engines on board. They are four one kilonewton thrusters that uh, will not lift this thing off the ground even at all. But uh, we're doing a low atmosphere test. You can see our bits from our payload deployment are raining down on the uh, Kennedy Space Center. But uh, the drag from low Earth atmosphere, which I realize is non-existent on Mars, is uh, providing enough to rotate this thing all on its own. This is unpowered entirely at this point, and it is creating a significant amount of drag. And that, well, not much can be said for how effective a system like this would be on Mars. But it was just an interesting idea that I wanted to play with. Uh, any little bit that we can do to help slow ourselves down as we speed through Mars's atmosphere, <coughs> excuse me, uh, could be beneficial. And what we would be lacking in air density, we might be able to make up for a bit in speed, especially on our initial descent. So. Um, this little guy is actually slowing himself down. We're now under uh, engine power also, but as I mentioned before, those engines will not provide nearly enough thrust to even lift this thing off the ground, let alone make any significant change. Drag is the real at work factor here. And oh man, if we had any kind of stable control, maybe we could put it down on the runway. How cool would that be? <laughs> eh, yeah, but seeing as how it's off-center and it won't really center itself, I'm not sure how well that's going to work. Uh, it's a little rough. We lost the engines, but uh, most of it came down just fine with some brakes. That's actually a successful landing. Holy crap. I did not expect that to work. Way to go, little dude. I am kind of impressed. I guess we should try it with a high altitude, huh? All right, so we're back out on the launch pad. This is a very similar vehicle. I've made some small changes to it, but we've built a much bigger packet of solid rocket motors underneath it to try to get a solid high altitude test for the simulation. And hopefully the spin stabilization will help. Uh, no, well, okay. Whole lot of rocket, not a lot of payload. Um, I guess angle of the fins was insufficient to stabilize this thing enough. Well, yeah, uh, not a whole lot I can do here except just try to ride out these engines. Yeah. Oh, we've got an engine failure also on one of our solid boosters. All right, let's just get the payload clear. Infernal Robotics, there you are. Get these airfoils deployed. I increased their, uh, their, ang their pitch, their angle of attack, in hopes of generating a little bit more spin and thus more drag. Um, that part is working. We are definitely spinning a little faster than we were in our previous iteration. Uh, I just don't think we're going to have enough time with these things deployed to really make a difference. And the fact that it won't center itself worries me greatly. So... Yeah, this is actually going a lot faster than the previous version, and we're under full engine burn currently. Hmm. Very interesting. Well. Yeah, this is going to hurt. Oh. Complete failure. That's not going to work at all. Bummer. All right, well, we are currently performing a high, very high altitude test of a design that we worked on a little bit in the last episode. It is not powered by the AJ-10, however, nine of these one kilonewton thrusters that have been upgraded to actually provide, there goes our delivery vehicle. Interesting. Hey, it got us here, right? Anyway, these uh, nine thrusters will provide 1.8 kilonewtons of thrust apiece on Arizine and N2O. And we're just kind of slowing down our ascent a little bit because uh, our delivery vehicle have taken us to a, a, an apogee of about 650 kilometers. And that means that our speed coming down is going to be ridiculous. We'll just uh, ride that up. 
and start to write it back down a little bit. Now this is the complete package as far as this whole thing is concerned. The yeah, I, I don't really need the antenna. I want to check on the battery draw. Okay, we have two uh, torque wheels on this that are, will provide a little bit of help as far as keeping it stable and level. Let's just go ahead and get to the fun part. Um, the atmosphere at about a 30 kilometer altitude is about what we'll see at sea level on Mars. Or I guess you can't really call it sea level. Basin level? There's a term for it, I just don't know what it is. If somebody knows it, go ahead and leave that for me in the comments. If and you don't mind. So, anyway, we're going to slow ourselves down a bit here before we hit atmosphere, get ourselves into a more realistic picture of what we're going to see when we actually um, encounter Mars atmosphere. Our orbital speed will probably be about uh, four and a half kilometers per second, which is why we don't really need a heat shield uh, when we come in for a landing, just for aero capture or aero braking, as it will most likely be done. So under thrust a bit, we're going to try to slow ourselves down. We are in the atmosphere and falling quite fast. Now, I brought this window up so that we can monitor our thrust levels and our ISP as we pass through different thicknesses of the atmosphere. I'm really curious as to how much thrust and ISP these engines, which were designed for vacuum use, are going to lose uh, in the upper levels of our atmosphere. And you see here at 50 some odd kilometers, they're actually doing pretty well. I don't think they've shown any significant loss whatsoever. And as we pass through the 40 kilometer and the 30 kilometer level, oh, that's some, wow, 15 Gs. That's some serious heating. But again, not enough to destroy the spacecraft. None of these are shielded tanks, but, um, all right. We did not see any significant drop in thrust or ISP at 30, between 40 and 30 kilometers. As we get a little lower, we'll st we should start to see that ISP tail off, but, oh great, we've got an engine failure on one of our thrusters. <laughs> oh no, that's going to make things super interesting. Yeah, look at this, see, it's going to want to roll us over. Can't really spin stabilize. Ah, this is a simulation. It's supposed to be a test. Come on. All right. Well, we've got about 800 some odd meters per second, 34 seconds of fuel. But every time we fire those thrusters, that's going to go down quite a bit. And as we get lower, our ISP is also going to get lower. Oh, okay. More more time on the simulation then. That's fine. No big deal. All right. So uh, I guess there's really not much to do except try to keep it pointed at the retrograde vector and ride this down. There's not a lot of weight towards the top, so I'm not worried about it re uh, reorienting itself. And I'm hoping that uh, we'll get significant drag. I figure if I can land it here on Earth <coughs> uh, without throttleable engines, I should be able to also land it on Mars. So I, yeah, here's hoping, right? Okay. Looks like we're coming down in a slightly more populated region of the uh, space center. And showing our current sea level thrust to weight ratio is about 1.4. That number is falling. It's already down to 1.3. Yeah, 1.3 mark. Interesting. Um, I'm hoping that by the time we're nearly out of fuel, it'll still be above 1 so that we can. Uh, impart significant changes to our rate of descent. All right, let's go ahead and light these engines. I don't know. I don't think we're 30 seconds from the ground by now. Probably a bit more than that, but uh, just to see how quickly our rate of descent slows down. Hmm. It's uh not terribly fast, although having to battle with this off-axis because of our engine failure. Of course we have an engine failure. Why wouldn't we have an engine failure? Oh, come on, come on. Oh. Ah. And fuel is spent. Yep. We are certainly out of fuel. I blame it on that burnt engine. Otherwise, this, this might have worked. Yeah, back to the drawing board, I suppose. 
So this is just a different iteration of basically the same thing. I reduced the fuel in the uh, delivery stage to limit our altitude a bit, but oh, throttle's still set. All right, uh, hopefully that'll be enough to get us clear of our delivery stage, but just in case, let's pivot ourselves over, move to the side a bit, excellent. Alright, so instead of the nine one kilonewton thrusters, this just has a single asterisk two engine, which um, provides, well, let's say two times nine is eighteen. This provides twenty something, so it is still a little, it is more thrust, certainly, and it does not have spool time, it has infinite ignitions, takes generally the same fuel, i say everything except for the asterisk is exactly the same as our previous version. Now we are just uh, waiting. We hit our apoapsis, and so now we're starting to fall back down. So let's activate our engine and uh, let ourselves get into the part of the atmosphere where we actually would like to do some testing. Mm -hmm. Oh, this one's subject to ullage. All right, well, that, that ullage easy enough. There we go. It is lit. We are. All right, let's bring up our engine information so we can monitor our thrust levels and our ISP. Yeah, it's not too bad. All right, that gives us a solid baseline. And I guess we can just uh, go ahead and get ourselves into the atmosphere, part of the atmosphere where we need to do our actual testing. Let ourselves pick up some speed too. We we're coming down quite a bit faster with our other test vehicle. I imagine those speeds were more accurately reflective of uh, what our Mars landing would look like. Yeah. Alright, 30 kilometers like that engine. We're a little low, I, I missed the mark a little bit, but uh, we're not showing significant loss of thrust or significant loss of ISP. It, uh, there is a loss, however. Uh, I think we're down from 311 seconds to 302 or something around those lines. Um, we are also not experiencing an engine failure, so that's going to make <laughs> trying to actually land this poor thing a whole lot easier. So, no significant notable drops in the part of the atmosphere that most accurately simulates Mars, but let's go ahead and try to test our technique here. Like I said, if I can try to land it here without throttleable engines and I, I'm fairly certain I can land it on Mars too. Alright, fire that engine up. We've got about a minute's worth of fuel. Uh, I'm sure our descent is going to take longer than that and of course some of it will be spent by the thrusters trying to keep us on retrograde. Yeah, alright. Uh, even this low does keep us pretty balanced and it does decelerate us pretty quickly. Although we're starting to definitely see that loss of thrust and that loss of ISP. Alright, nice and easy now. Slow it down. Oh well, yeah, the thrust is seriously tapered off. Uh, easy. It's very difficult to keep this thing pointed to retrograde and especially the slower you get the more retrograde wants to move come on easy does it uh, uh, lost it okay come on come on oh this is kind of a bad landing spot I can't even really see the ground uh, And kill it. We're down. We're on the we're, we're on the ground. We did it. <laughs> that's an actual landing. <laughs> All right. So I think we know which one of those worked best. But that's gonna do it for us today, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. I do appreciate it, and I'll see all of you in the next one. Until then, see you later.